BFTB, best fight the best. So I wanna do a tutorial right quick because I think a lot of us have issues with actually um, finding who is a protector, who is a sheep, and who is just blatant idiots. So I need to I need to do a tutorial right quick just to help the boxing community understand who is who and what is what. So first, we need to we need to uh, break out the definitions. You know, protector, a boxing protector. You know, that's somebody that has just enough knowledge to be dangerous in the sport of boxing. They have just enough. Um, they have they 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 know um, resumes. You know they know resumes. Um, they can they can speak to um, highly of a fighter that they like. They know just enough to be dangerous. They don't know enough to to say um, what a fighter that they don't like um, is doing or can do. They just know what a fighter that they do like does. And they know what a fighter, what that fighter's nemesis, um, the flaws of that fighter's nemesis. That's a protector. Like they don't know, they don't study and just know all boxing. They don't, no, nah, they don't got time for that shit. A protector knows their fighter. They know their fighter and they will protect their fighter at all costs using a plethora of excuses. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, and... The excuses that they use will have some validity to them so that they can say, see, told you, the sheep, those are the ones that, that is the majority. That's the majority of the casual fan is sheep. You know, they, they run into a protector and they can say, the protector will say some things. The sheep will say, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. And they'll latch onto it. So sheep have, um, not a short attention span they have a clingy attention span very clingy you got to get a sheep early man you got to get them you know when they're baby sheep i forget the terms that there's a there's a name for a baby sheep but i forget what it is but you got to get the the sheep when they're babies because once they get grown once they're they're older they're stuck in their ways they're set it doesn't matter what you say you know they the 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 protectors already got them already got them going so the protector there's another name for a protector it's called a herder they herd the sheep you know there's the other name for a protector so protector aka herder so when people say you're a protector you're a protector you know they're seeing something in you that's that's showing protection traits you know they're showing protection traits so there's protectors there's the sheep you know, they don't know any better they're just going to follow what the herder or the protector says. You know, you have the hardcore fan who knows um, either a little or a lot about everything. That's the hardcore fan. You know, they know a little or a lot about everything. They don't know, they don't know everything. They know a little or a lot about everything. And then there, there are the unchallengeables. <laughs> And I haven't ran into many unchallengeables. I haven't ran into many, but I know there's one. Kurt Sugar is unchallengeable. Now you, now I'm not saying I don't I want I don't want you guys to get confused when I'm saying unchallengeable is that they 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 are the gods of boxing. They're the know-all be-alls. No, they're unchallengeable because they will embarrass you on your knowledge. That's why they're unchallengeable. They're unchallengeable by choice. You choose to not challenge them because they will make you look stupid. They don't know everything, but they know far more than everybody else. I put it to you like that. I don't know many, but, I, but Kirk Sugar is one of them. Um, so there's the definition. You have your protectors, aka herders. You have your sheep, which is pretty much everybody. You know, you have your hardcores, which is me. You know, we know a little or a lot about everything, and we have no problem doing research. None. No problem at all doing research. You know, and then you have you have um, your unchallengeables who are not unchallengeable by the by the name but they're unchallengeable by the challenger's choice because you don't want to look stupid 
Now, now that I've given you the definitions, right? I've told you um, what they are. Protectors, a.k.a. herders. Sheep, which covers the majority of people. Sheep, a.k.a. casuals. That covers the majority of people. Then hardcores, you know, then the unchallengeables. You have the definitions. Now, now that I've said that, when I start to speak on um, people using excuses and stuff like that, you'll be able to identify whether they are unchallengeables, whether they are protectors, herders, casuals, hardcores. Me, as a hardcore, I am biased towards Deontay Wilder. I am biased towards Lomachenko. I am biased towards Charlo. Why am I biased? Because they want what I want. They want the best to fight the best. They have no problem with calling out a person's name. They have no problem after calling out that person's name on doing everything that they can do to make that fight. There's no fluff with those guys. You know, there's no, eh, Sure, oh, are we? Eh, or does, does he really want it? There's none of that. None of that. When Loma Chico says, I want Tank Davis, I want Mikey Garcia. When he says that, I believe him. I believe him. And in the position that he's in, you know, Loma Chico, I mean, uh, Mikey Garcia and Tank Davis can press for those fights. I don't see them pressing. I've never heard them pressing for those fights. Never. Not one time. They can press for those fights and make it happen. You know, Lomachenko is the one that's sort of that's bound with Al Heyman that has issues of top rank. Mikey Garcia and Tank Davis don't have those issues. They can press for those fights and, and push for those fights. They are not. They're very hesitant. Charlo wants by name Danny Garcia. GGG. How he says, it. give me GGG. Canelo. By name, he's calling these guys. He wants them by name. He's not saying, oh, uh, just give me everybody. And then people will say, well, do you got anybody in particular? You know, no, everybody, everybody. And if he does say everybody, he's still coming back and clarifying, saying, give me GGG. Give me Canelo. Give me Danny Jacobs. I want him. Give me those. That's what he's saying. But all those guys that he's calling out are the quote unquote A side. So it's up to them to press for those fights. Golovkin was the, ordered by the WBC to fight Charlo for the WBC uh, mandatory title. Golovkin just went quiet. And here's where the protectors, the sheep, the casuals, here's where that comes into play. Me, as a hardcore, someone who knows um, a lot about a lot of stuff, um, and there's others, there are other hardcores that, that know a little, but they know a little about a lot of stuff. Me, as a hardcore, I, I am biased towards Charlo. I have no problem with saying that. And explain to you why. Told you why I'm biased towards him. Because he wants to fight the best. Those guys, others, as casuals and protectors, will say, excuse like, what has Danny Jacobs done to deserve Golovkin? That's an excuse. And I and I break it down and say, well, what did Dominic Wade do to deserve Golovkin? Oh, well, Dominic Wade was a, was well, he was the mandatory. He was the he was the, I, the WB no IBF mandatory. He was the IBF mandatory. Okay, all right. Well, Charlo is the WBC mandatory. So if Golovkin beats Charlo, well, then Golovkin will be the WBC mandatory to Canelo's title. Oh, well, it doesn't matter because uh, um, no, he hasn't done anything. He just can't come to the division and fight two bums and then expect to get Golovkin. You see, you see, that, that those, are, those are protector excuses. They're protector excuses. You are protecting Golovkin from an ass whooping. You are protecting Golovkin because you do not think Golovkin can beat Charlo. Because if you did think Golovkin could beat Charlo, you would be pressing Golovkin to take that fight. You wouldn't be coming at me. You wouldn't be coming at me crying like a bitch because I want 
the best to fight the best. You wouldn't be coming at me like that. You would be going at Golovkin saying, what? BFTB, man, Golovkin, Golovkin will fuck Charlo up. He knocks Charlo out. As a matter of fact, Charlo, I mean, Golovkin, press for this fight. Let's go, Golovkin. I want to see this. Nope, I don't want you to fight nobody else. I want to see it. That's what a, a hardcore that is biased towards Golovkin would be doing. A hardcore that's biased towards Golovkin would be like, what? Man, Golovkin destroys Charlo. They'd be like, or a hardcore that's biased to Canelo. We'll be like, oh, Golovkin destroys, I mean, Charlo destroys, I mean, not Charlo, but Canelo destroys, um, Canelo destroys Charlo. He destroys him. Matter of fact, I'm, hey, Charlo, please, Charlo, fight, I mean, uh, Canelo, fight Charlo so you, so you can shut up Charlo's fans. Canelo, please fight Charlo. You destroy this boy. He's not on your level. Fight him, please. But you'll be on Canelo's page asking him that. Because you believe in your heart of hearts that Canelo destroys Charlo. And you want to shut us up. And you want Canelo to shut us up. That is someone that is a hardcore fan of Canelo. You, you have in your heart that Canelo's skill for skill is better. Um, his style is better. His grit, his will, his determination is better. Um, and you want... Char and you want Canelo to prove it. You want Canelo to shut Charlo up. You are a diehard Canelo fan. You don't even have to be a diehard. You can just be a hardcore, regular hardcore. But you are pressing for the fight to happen. You're not making excuses. Oh, you're not saying, no, so that's a hardcore. That's what a hardcore would do. That's what someone that's a hardcore fan, you will be on Canelo's page as a fan of his, pressing him to fight Charlo. You would not be saying, this is what a casual, this is what a protector does. A protector will say, oh, well, Can well, Canelo just fought Golovkin. He fought Golovkin. Canelo has a better resume. He fought uh, Floyd Mayweather. Canelo's resume is better. Canelo just signed a $365 million deal. He's touching M's. You know, Canelo makes so much money. Canelo is so known. So he doesn't have to fight Charlo. Those are excuses. Those are excuses to avoid or duck a fight. That's what they are. Those are excuses. You you get no money. You're getting none of that $365 million. You're not getting one penny. Um, the, the fact that Canelo's known is based on you actually knowing him. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't understand why that's even an excuse. You know him because he fights. If he doesn't fight, then he's going to eventually fade away i mean fade off into fucking oblivion and the only time we'll talk to talk about him is someone says oh well he could have would have could have should have did this to this person don't nobody can't look you are one you're you're just you're one of the group you're either a hardcore you're either a protector of sheep or you're 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 uh, uh unchallengeable i mean you're one of them if you're out making excuses, saying why a fight can't happen, then you are a protector. The sheep are easy. They're easy. Sheep are real easy. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. The only thing a sheep knows is what someone else told them. I had a sheep tell me today that Canelo, <laughs> that Canelo fought Floyd in his 27th fight. That Canelo has 25 fights since he fought Floyd. Because... That's a sheep. They don't know any better. They do no research. They don't know anything. They just know what a protector told them. Some protector told this sheep that Floyd cherry-picked Canelo. Canelo was green when he fought Floyd. That's what a protector says. That's a protector's excuse on why Canelo got his ass whipped. Oh, oh, Flo Canelo was so young. He was young. He was so green. You know, he... he Floyd cherry picked him. So the, the casuals who don't know any better would just be like, well, yeah, he was young. Floyd picked that. That's, that's what that guy said. So he must be. So, so that means, you know, if Canelo's got 50 fights right now, then shit. When Floyd fought him, he must have been super young in his career. He, dang, he was green. He, but he must have been like maybe 20 fights in. He must have been in the teens. Until you fucking expose them and say, no, Canelo had 43 fights when he fought Floyd Mayweather. He was 42 and 0 and 1 
when he fought Floyd Mayweather. And he had two belts when he fought Floyd Mayweather. And he lost to Floyd Mayweather. Badly. He was very experienced. Very. He just got beat by a better fighter. But, you know, the sheep, they don't know any better. And then they'll have, like, one sub to their YouTube channel. They'll have, like, ten followers or some shit like that. They'll have, like, two views to, to, to the one video that they have. And then they'll be on my page talking about BFTB. Uh, you don't know boxing. You only have 300 subs. Or you only have 44 people or 100 people that looked at your video. Ha, ha, ha. You don't know what you're talking about. Like, but you have one sub. You have like three people that viewed the one video you made four years ago. Cheap. They're not hard to spot, man. They're not hard to spot. They're not. But but the, the crazy thing is, the casual, I mean, the protectors and the sheep are the ones that can make the fights happen. They are the ones that can make the fight happen. The problem is... The protectors and the sheep spend all of their time on their nemesis's page, talking shit about their nemesis. And when they get on the person's page that can actually make the fight, they're just giving them kudos. You're so great. Your chest is so big. Your thighs are so thick. Oh, you look so great. But then they get on the other page and, oh, you, you're a bum. You only fought bums. That's all you ever fought. You don't deserve. You don't deserve it. You don't deserve this. You don't deserve that. Uh, uh, when you're gonna step up? When you're gonna fight somebody? But then I say, I, I challenge them and say, well, how is this guy supposed to fight that guy without that guy agreeing to fight this guy? Is he supposed to go to his house and drag him to the ring and fight him? Is that, is that how that's supposed to work? And then they'll just immediately, the protectors, immediately change the subject. Immediately. That's how you can tell a protector. Like I said, they know a little, they know just enough to be dangerous. They know just enough to sway sheep. That's all they know. Just enough to sway sheep. You, they'll say, oh, you only, you, prime example. They'll say, uh, Joshua fought seven top ten guys and Wilder only fought one. protector so then me as a hardcore who knows a lot about many things will say actually no that is wrong actually wilder fought more top 10 fighters than joshua and then i will break it down he fought stavern who was number one and the champion that's two fights he fought duopa who was number four he fought uh spilka who was number six he fought Washington, who was number not, uh, 10. He fought Molina, who was number 9. I, and I just break it down. Ortiz, who was number 2. And I break it down. And then when I when I get to Fury, who was, now, who was number 3, which will be his ninth, uh, his ninth top 10 fighter, 8, 8 or 9, whatever, when I get to that, then they'll reply with, all those fighters you named are shit. They're garbage. They're just horrible fighters. They're all bums. Joshua fought top 10 superior talent. Protector. So then I will go back to the protector and say, hmm, well, if all the people that Wilder fought, the, all the top guys that I mentioned, because now we just changed the subject, even though I told you what they were ranked when Wilder fought them. I told you what they were ranked, right? They were ranked in the top 10. So that just debunked and just destroyed your first thing about while they're not fighting top 10 guys, right? You just change the subject, a protector. You just change the subject to, oh, well, they were garbage fighters. They were garbage. They're all shit fighters. While uh, Joshua fights top, he fights the real legit fighters, right? You just change it to that because you think me as a hardcore, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. You think I am a casual, right? But as a hardcore, as someone who does know what I'm talking about, then I go back and say, okay, well... Wilder fought Molina and knocked Molina out, right? When he was ranked number nine. Joshua fought him a year later when he was ranked number 10 and knocked him out a year later. So if he was shit when he was, when he fought Wilder, when he had a higher rank, a better rank, when he, he was shit when he fought him, how did he mysteriously turn good when he fought Joshua when he had a worse ranking when he, than when he fought Wilder? They'll change the subject again. 
protector. They'll say, oh, well, 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 Molina wobbled. He wobbled Wilder. He had him doing the chicken, the stinky leg. He wobbled him. His legs were visibly buckled. He was hurt. And and he didn't even touch Joshua. He didn't even touch Joshua. Joshua destroyed him in three rounds. He didn't even touch him. You see how they changed the subject. You changed the subject from, you started out with Wilder doesn't fight top 10. Joshua does. And then when I, when I proved you wrong there, you changed the subject from, okay, well, 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 Molina uh, was better when he fought Wilder. I mean, when he fought Joshua. Then, and he just changed that to, okay, well, uh, Wilder, I mean, Joshua beat him better. So then I say, okay, you say Joshua beat um, Molina better than Wilder did. Then I go to what Molina said. Molina has no horse in the race. He was knocked out by both. <laughs> he was knocked out by both. So there's no there's no win for him to shit on it, either one. Because if he shits on one, the other one says, it doesn't matter what you say because I knock you the fuck out anyway. But he himself said, Wilder is better. He himself said that. So then, Protector goes back and says, oh, that's because, that's because, uh, uh, Joshua knocked him out in three rounds. That's why he says that. Of course he's going to, of course he's going to say that. Needless to say, I have debunked the protector several times because like I said, they know just enough to sway sheep. Nothing more. The same shit with Canelo and Charlo. The same shit. Same shit. Now I say, well, why doesn't Canelo fight Charlo? Why? Why is he fighting Fielding? Why isn't, well, what is that? It's a voluntary vac a voluntary um, fight for uh, a WBA super belt, which is not real because the real belt Caleb Smith has. Then they, they come at me with, oh, well, you know, um, you need to give this man fielding respect. You need to put, give him respect. He fought a guy in, in a, a highly ranked guy in Germany, you know, and earned that belt. You need to give him respect. But then these same people will come back. That's a protector. That's a protector of Canelo. These same people will come back and say, Wilder beaten Stavern was nothing because Stavern was garbage. Stavern was shit. Even though Stavern was the number one ranked mandatory to Vitaly Klitschko before Vitaly Klitschko retired. Highly ranked, proven ranked, and earned his title shot. Earned his belt. But yet, uh, the real belt. The real WBC belt. Not the silver title. He earned the real belt. But yet, the protector will come back to me and say, oh, well, we need to respect um, Rocky Fielding. You know, just because Rocky Field is fighting Canelo, so we need to respect him. We need to say that this is top comp, you know, because he's fighting Canelo. The protector will say that. Oh, he earned his his shot against this Zu, Zu, Zuliga, Zuga, Zu, Zuega guy. He was the top ranked guy and he fought him in Germany. Yeah, he earned, he was top ranked, highly ranked. But then you look at this Zuega guy, you look at his resume, and the only guy on his resume, is Rocky Fielding. <laughs> That's the only guy on Zuega's resume. Zu Zuega. That's the only guy on his resume is Rocky Fielding. That's it. Nobody else. A bunch of nobodies. The same excuses. The same reasons that you use to defame Deontay Wilder. He's got... Look at his resume. It's nothing but bums. Blah. But the protector... The protector can switch that up whenever they want. To justify whatever they want to justify. But when you use the same even playing field. Next thing you know all of a sudden it's. Oh, well. You're a racist. Because they have nothing else. Of course. Of course you're going to sway to Charlo. Of course. He's black. You're racist. That's how you, that's how you can tell once you've gotten to a protector. You've, you've, you've taken everything away from them. They resort to racism because they have nothing else to go on. Their facts are mute. Mute. Because any fact you come at me with, because I actually do my research. So any fact you come at me with, I'm going to give you 
a counter to that with facts. Articles, posts, whatever you want. Because I do my research. You, on the other hand, you know just enough to sway sheep. You are a protector. That's it. You are a protector. You know, the unchallengeables, you just mentioned those guys. The Kurt Sugars, you, you just mentioned them. You, you just mentioned them. They speak, you listen. You know what I'm saying? That, you just leave them alone, man. They, they are in their own realm. The fucked up part about unchallengeables is if they start acting fucking weird. And normally, I've, I've never ran into any unchallengeable that acts weird. Um, yeah, I, I really... There's a few that I'm, I'm thinking could potentially get to that level. But right now, the only one I know, I know for sure, for sure, is Kurt Sugar, man. That, for sure, for sure, unchallengeable. For sure, for sure. Unchallengeable by, by choice. Um, there's sheep everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, I, I, there are sheep. Here's a sheep everywhere. Sheep, there, there are sheep everywhere. To protect us, easy to spot. Super easy to spot. They'll come at you. They'll they'll comment on your page with a really, really big paragraph worth of opinions. And they'll put like one fact in there. And then everything underneath of that will be just um, opinions. And they'll be shitting on somebody. They'll be, they'll be degrading them, defaming them. You know, not like me. I don't like Anthony Joshua. Because he's taken away from what I want to see. He's ducking and avoiding what I want to see. That's why I don't like him. It has nothing to do with his fighting style. Do I think he has a better... Um, he's a better uh, boxer than Deontay Wilder? Yes, I do. But I'm a hardcore fan, so I can say that. As a protector, you guys won't even give Deontay Wilder the credit to say he hits harder. You won't even give him that. Because you are a protector of Anthony Joshua. According to you, Anthony Joshua hits harder than Deontay Wilder. He's a better boxer. He has better head movement, better footwork. He's more athletic. He's just overall everything better, and he's fought the way better competition, according to you guys. But but according to you guys, with Anthony Joshua being the way better fighter, he's fought in all the best people. He has all the best skills. He's just farly superior, but you don't want to see the fight. You won't press to see it. That's because you're a protector. You fear the outcome. Because if you didn't fear the outcome... You wouldn't protect him. You would be like on his page, pressing Anthony Joshua to fight Deontay Wilder at all costs. You'd be pressing him to give a 50-50 split because what difference does it make to you? You're not getting any of that money. It's not money out of your pocket that you got to pay Wilder. So you wouldn't care. You would just want to see the fight. You would just want to shut us yanks up. That's all you would be caring about. But you're a protector. You fear the outcome. You, By nature, you protect by nature, you fear the outcome. So since you fear the outcome, you will make excuses. Oh, his legs are skinny. He doesn't sell. Uh, um, he's just from Alabama. Some guy from Alabama. Um, the fifty million was fake. It wasn't real. Uh, uh, he can't sell in a bathroom. Nobody knows him. You make those type of excuses. You'll make those because you fear the outcome. You fear the outcome. You weren't making those excuses with Joseph Parker because you didn't fear the outcome. You was fine and dandy with 33%, with Joseph Parker getting 33%. You didn't fear the outcome. You knew better. You knew Joshua was going to beat him. You was fine and dandy with Joshua paying Charles Martin a fucking nobody. He was a nobody before and a nobody after and still a nobody who just got his ass whipped by Kanaki, even though it was a good fight. He still got his ass whipped and Kanaki's a smaller dude. But you didn't fear the outcome. So you had no problem with Anthony Joshua giving Charles Martin 47%. You know, you knew Vladimir Klitschko fighting Anthony Joshua. If he beat Vladimir Klitschko and he had a really good chance because he just got schooled by Tyson Fury and he hadn't fought anybody, no tune-ups, no nothing. So he just came right back into the ring, fresh off the couch. You know what I'm saying? For two years, fresh off the couch, then go fight Anthony Joshua. And you guys are going to be like, oh yeah, that was a historic and legacy fight. Such a great fight. Even though he hadn't fought in anybody in two years, this is such a great fight. And he got floored. Got dropped and floored in that fight. Damn near taken out completely. By a 41-year-old man. (sighs) 
you're you're okay with that, with giving that 50%. But when it comes to Wilder and Wilder only, you're not okay. He needs to get 50, he needs to be lowballed. He needs to know his worth. He's not worth anything. It's like, come on, man. You're a protector, dude. You are a protector. You're not hard to spot. You're very easy. Very easy to spot. Very easy. Very. The sheep are just, y'all are just dumb. <laughs> y'all motherfuckers are just dumb, man. Y'all are my entertainment, and you comment on my shit. Y'all are just dumb. <laughs> y'all are just stupid as fuck, man. You can tell a sheep. Joshua's got four belts. He's got four belts. You know, and Waller only got one. No, no, no. You're a sheep. Joshua has three belts. The fourth belt is a minor title, not a major one. If that's the case, then Wilder has two belts. He has a major and a minor. The, what is it, the America's Continental Belt, some shit like that, whatever. But it's the same level, the same level as the IBO title. It is a minor belt. Doesn't mean anything. If you have, if one person has the WBA, the WBO, the IBF, and the WBC, they are undisputed. If someone else, some other champion has the IBF belt, it means absolutely nothing. But you are a sheep, so you don't know any better. You're just dumb. That's all it is. <laughs> all right, let me wrap this one up, man. So again, I'm going to wrap it up. You have the unquestionables, the unchallengeables. I mean, the unchallengeables, which at this moment is the, is all I know is Kurt Sugar. The unchallengeable. Um, then you have the hardcores like myself. We either know a lot about a lot or we know a little about a lot. But we know a lot. However you want to look at it. We either know a lot about a lot or a little about a lot. But we know our shit and we do our research. Because we're always challenged. Then you have the protectors, you know, who know just enough to sway sheep. And then you have the sheep. BF2 